Back in the 1980s, Australian director Richard Lowenstein cast the late rock star Michael Hutchins in his cult classic Dogs in Space. The film tells the story of an overcrowded share house in inner city Melbourne, just as punk music was sweeping through Australian culture. Now he's made a tribute to the underground music scene that punk created, using interviews, photos and some never-before-seen never, never before seen footage. The documentary is called We're Living on Dog Food and it premieres at the Melbourne International Film Festival on Sunday. Raphael Epstein reports and a warning, this story contains language that may offend some viewers. Nobody else knew about these things. It was like hidden treasure. Trying to find that note that would make people shit their pants. This is an examination of a short period in time where a sort of a youth movement and a social sort of revolution in art, culture, music, etc. happened. The documentary tries to capture a music scene that eventually gave birth to musicians like Nick Cave and punters and collectors. We knew you were on the cusp of something. You knew you were part of something. That's what punk rock was all about. Listen to me. It's my turn. What was unique about that time was there was, it was happening all across the world. This sort of certain style of music that uh, was happening. There was uh, technological advancements. The synthesizer was just being invented. And so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it was incredibly exciting. <laughs> Richard Lowenstein's Dogs in Space was finished in 1986, after most of the bands it depicted had disappeared. There are photos of the dozens of short-lived groups, and the documentary tries to capture their spirit of improvisation. And all these people wanted to play music, and all these people did art, and some of them made little movies and stuff like that. And it definitely had the feel of a sort of a swell of stuff that was, that was occurring. <laughs> There's a few basic rules. Anybody can play, the band has to be disposable, you're not allowed to play more than twice, and you just have three songs. And the Jetsons, they were one of the ones that came to one of the early nights. They turned into hunters and collectors. One woman who was an extra in Dogs in Space reveals that she lost her virginity and tried heroin on the set of the film. It was a scene and mindset that helped kill the music. A lot of the bands that had been incredibly creative and vibrant and doing great things did start to um, disappear into the pit of heroin addiction. But it was the late lead singer of In Excess who dominated Dogs in Space. I might never do any more. <laughs> he told me he was riddled with anxiety. He didn't feel comfortable being Sam. He thought he was a terrible actor. Any girl that would spend ten minutes alone with Mark Hutchins in a room you're gone. You're completely gone. He was that fucking charismatic. On set, he chatted with Sam Sajavka, the musician who was the basis for his character. Well, you think you're actually anything like this um, character? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I wouldn't know whether to agree with that or not. My mum, and you see that expression, you know, your mother wouldn't know you well. She saw Countdown one night and In Excess were on, and, and the next week she said, oh, I saw you on Countdown. The headquarters of punk was the Crystal Ballroom in St Kilda. Then it hosted everyone from Nick Cave to Lou Reed. Now it's a restaurant, apartments and a function room. It was a very seedy area. It's sort of sharing the street with junkies and drunks and prostitutes and that sleaziness just kind of made it all the more exciting and magic. I guess it was a little bit like being your grandparents giving you the keys to their mansion. It was the most exciting. I can't believe how excited I used to get. You can, of course, still hear punk in today's music, and you can also see the musical divides. How the North Fitzroy bands used to fight with the St Kilda bands, and they still, and, and then now, 30 years later, they're still waging those battles, you know, going, they were arty, arty wankers and we are doing it real, you know. It's, it's recent history and it's history that's not normally documented and let's see how humorous it was, let's see how entertaining it was, let's not just do a dry sort of look or this is all very serious, this happened and let's put it in the files somewhere. Later this year the documentary will be released on DVD alongside the remastered Dogs in Space. Raphael Epstein, Late Life.